drop shadow effects in Corel Draw. Powerful feature, powerful function in Corel Draw. We use this particular interactive tool quite a bit. We use it from putting drop shadows behind text if we're illustrating automotive vehicles and doing high end work. We use a lot of drop shadow effects to create shading and highlighting. We use drop shadows for a lot of stuff. You'll see it in a lot of my free tutorials. And you'll also see it used quite a bit in the power training. If you need advanced training, you want to go deep in Corel Draw, really bring up your workflow, go ahead and grab the advanced training on Advanced Artist for Corel Draw. In fact, our advancedartist.com logo. Go ahead and create a rectangle here, and I'll send that to the back and fill that with the black. You can see these swooping light effects we have here. These were actually created with drop shadows. We just created a linear arch, put a little ball on the end, and then put a drop shadow behind that, deleted our vector object, and now we have a raster effect, very soft effect, of some spinning light orbs going around our logo. So you can see that this drop shadow tool, very powerful. We use it a lot. We want to go into the basics in this tutorial and we'll go ahead and get started over here to the right. Now I've got the word drop shadow set up here. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and grab the drop shadow tool down here, the interactive drop shadow tool. It's about 10 down in the toolbar. Left click on the little arrow there and if you go down it's the fourth one down drop shadow. Click on that. You notice that our properties bar will change immediately up here in the workspace. Got some presets here. Almost never use these but they are here if you want them. Let's go ahead and bring this toolbar down here while we're working on this section, in this session here. And I'll go ahead here and I'm just going to click on my object with my drop shadow, interactive drop shadow tool selected. I'll left click and hold down. You can see I get a white chip and a black color chip to come out, an arrow there, and then I get an outline of my object. And that's going to show me where my drop shadow is going to drop when I re release my left mouse button. So I'll bring this right up here and release right here. Now we can see some settings come to light up here in the properties bar. Now before we go into the properties bar, I want to go into the interactive parts relating to this tool. You can see there's two color chips here. There's a white and a black chip. Little squares we have here. And then there's a slider in the middle. You'll notice that if I left click and hold down on this slider and push it up here, my drop shadow gets lighter. If I left click and drag it down to the end, my drop shadow gets darker. I can also change the color of my drop shadow by coming over to my color palette, left clicking, see on this blue, drag it over, and then left click, release with my cursor in the center of the chip, and I've changed the color of my drop shadow. I can also come up here and change my drop shadow opacity with a slider up here in the properties bar. You'll notice that when I change this, the slider, the interactive slider on the actual drop shadow will change also and move, and you can see that move from up there from down here to up there. I can also adjust my feather here, go from 15 out here to say 36, that blurs it and softens it up quite a bit. We'll take that back down. I can also come over here and change my feathering direction. If I change that to inside, you can see that my effect becomes a drop shadow that's going inside. Now if I want to create an effect inside of text with a drop shadow, I can right click on this and select break drop shadow group apart. I can take this drop shadow text, even though it's separated, it still has color properties with it. I can right click, drag, select power clip inside, but you'll notice nothing will happen here, even though I've put that white power clip inside. Now if I hit control Z and go back, the reason nothing happens is because I set to multiply. If I change my node here to normal, let's take a look at this. If I'm set on multiply, which is right here on top of a dark object. My drop shadow doesn't show up. And I'll go ahead and change this. I'm going to take this drop shadow and change it to a white just so we can see. We can see that we can't see it on the white and we can't see it on the black because it is a white drop shadow. But because it's set to a property of multiply, it doesn't show up. Now if I change the property to normal, now my white will show up. Now I can right click on this, select break apart, bring this down here, right click, hold down with my right click, release here and select power clip inside and now I've got a kind of beveled effect using a drop shadow built into my text. Now I could still go into this power clip, I'll hold down control and click on that and I could select this power clip and change this to a yellow and now we can see that right click select finish editing this level and now I've got a yellow in here if I had a white or a blue it'd get kind of a green look or something like that so I could use that to create effects so my drop shadow 
is a great tool for creating effects. I want to hit Control Z and go back to where we had the drop shadow applied. Here we've got it as a yellow, and I believe it's reattached now. Yes, it is. I'm going to click and fill this with a yellow. No, not that. I'm going to left click, hold down, bring this over, change this to a yellow. I'm going to change my properties to invert. And you want to go through all these properties, get different colored vector backgrounds, and you'll be able to see how these different properties affect your effects when you're working with them. Now, if I click on invert, you'll notice that this is yellow, but in the background, it's kind of like a blue color here, and my dark is different. Now, if I take this and I make this a blue, I get a blue background, but I get a different color here. If I make this a red, I get the same type of thing. We're inverting the color here. I'm going to go back to the drop shadow here. I can actually come up here and select Copy Drop Shadow Properties From, as you can see here. Now, one of the great things we can do with this, now let me know what the basic features and functionalities are, the sliders and the properties bar and all that stuff. If I come to say something like this skull, and I want to put some shading on my skull here, some different shading coming around here off the back of the skull, what I can do very simply is, is I'll go ahead and ungroup this. And I'm just going to create some shading here for this skull real quickly using the Drop Shadow tool. I think this will open up a number of things for you, but I'll go ahead and take my Bezier tool here and I'm just going to bring some effects down in here through here up off of the jaw and we'll kind of shade this in this way here and we'll bring this in down here and we'll have this set up like this. I'm going to go to my Smart Fill tool which is actually right here and I'm just going to click and fill this so that I get a fill that I can work with and apply a drop shadow to and then a power clip that inside of the skull to very quickly create a soft handed shaded effect. Now this is a very complex vector object so Corel's taking just a minute to process the smart fill but I want to follow the shape of the skull based off the vector objects that I'm working with. Next I'm going to create another smart fill here. Now even though it's a smart fill tool I actually use it a lot of times just to create vector shapes that I'm working with and we'll create that right here and we'll create this one here then I'll combine these two and create a drop shadow and we'll power clip that inside the skull to create a shading effect. Now we can see that the smart fill tool, even though it's called a smart fill, it actually created two vector objects. I'm going to go ahead and select that line I created and delete that. Then I'll take these two objects, select both of them, you'll see my properties bar will change here and I'm going to go ahead and weld these together. I'm going to go to my interactive drop shadow tool and I'm going to create a drop shadow here. I'm just going to bring this right over here and line it up. Got my color set up like this. I'm going to change to outside. As you can see there, and I'm going to bring my feathering back just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and left click and change my color to a little bit of a lighter gray. As you can see here now, I'll right click and select break drop shadow group apart. We'll go ahead and delete this here. Now I've got some shading here. As you can see there, now I can take this right click bring it to my vector skull here select power clip inside then I can hold down my control key go inside that power clip pull this back to right about there and if I want to darken it up around the outside a little bit I can actually duplicate this you can see how it's getting a little bit darker as I duplicate the drop shadows on top of the drop shadows here right click finish editing this level and now I've created some shading that'll work with my object here and then I can bring my wing back and using my drop shadow I've been very easily able to create some shading in there and you can create all kinds of shading and highlighting effects if I wanted to make this skull a light gray color or let's say we'll fill it with a color that's kind of like a a bone color a cream color here something like that and let's say I wanted some highlighting up here on the front of the skull where the light was hitting but yet this is a shadow in the back I could very easily create an ellipse that I rotate to make it kind of like a highlight right there. We'll fill that with some color then we'll go ahead and grab our drop shadow and we'll apply that right there. We'll change it to normal and select white. We'll bring our feather out a little bit and then we'll zoom in and see what we've got here for our highlight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click and select break drop shadow group apart. I'll delete the vector object and you see I've got some highlight there. Now if I want to increase that, I can just simply hit Control C, Control V, and that'll paste in some more there, and it'll start to lighten that up even more, and I can create a highlight that way. And I'll actually change this to a little bit of a grayer color, and you can see what I'm talking about here as far as that highlight's concerned. Now we've got a highlight on the front of our skull. So the drop shadow 
It's a very powerful tool in Corel Draw, and we use it for many different types of effects.